Hey, what's up my fellow runners? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're deep diving into a controversial training technique, the Norwegian double threshold training. If you don't know exactly what that is, don't worry, we'll get to the specifics in this video. But this method has essentially been brought by attention by the Ingbertsen family. Jacob Ingbertsen, one of the world best runners, he has been incorporating this training method via his father. And this has sparked the attention of many runners worldwide. So, is this method something you should be incorporating into your training? Let's find out. Let's go! Five laps. This would be some consolation. Just over 200. He's miles ahead. He's going to smash the world record. 444.79 is the target. He's done it. It's a world record. So first off, how did this method came to be? Well, Gert Ingbritsen, it's the father of Jacob, Philip and Hendrik Ingr Ingbritsen. Pew, mouthful. He has incorporated this training for his sons. This Norwegian guided double threshold training hinges on regular lactate measurements to get very precise number to incorporate into your training. This allows runners to identify their threshold pace as some other thresholds as well. If you want to know more info about these lactate thresholds, I have made a video about this, do check it out. The runners use this threshold to specify their training to run just below their threshold level. This maximizes the quality they can get from their training without having too much fatigue from the training itself. By running just below their lactate threshold, athletes aim to enhance their metabolic and anaerobic efficiency without subjecting their body to excessive strain. Lactate is a byproduct of your carbohydrate metabolism and serves as a crucial indicator for exertion levels when training. And with the Norwegian method, they not only use that lactate test very regularly to constantly check whether they are running at the right intensities, but they also try and improve implement double training in one day. So they will have a training before noon and afternoon or somewhere split between the day to maximize that metabolic response, but to minimize that exertion. While the method has some promising benefit, it also has some downsides. One of it being the regular testing. One, this is inconvenient to say the least. You are getting your blood taken at regular intervals. And secondly, this is also wildly expensive if you're not a pro athlete. However, there are alternatives these days. You can use your heart rates if you've had a test before to see at which heart rates you get which exertion. If your endurance improves, then your heart rates will improve with it. So you can use this for longer and not just by the paces you have to run at a certain exertion level. Another alternative is an exertion scale. This estimates your lactate threshold and you can simulate your training accordingly. So I know what you're thinking at the moment. All of this information is fantastic, but can I and should I incorporate this into my own practice or training? Well, two factors I think you should consider. One, the regular testing is inconvenient and expensive, and I think not for most people. Secondly, double training could be a fantastic alternative for your training, although it takes a lot of planning to get this done in one day. But if you feel like you are sometimes overexerting yourself with your training, then maybe incorporating two training in one day may be the solution. Also, if you are trying to improve your endurance, you also have to train different parts of your metabolism as well. Like your zone two training, which I have explained before, which I'll link right here, is maybe a more efficient way to improve your endurance. So do check out this video. I think for a non-professional athlete, it's much more valuable to get this test done once by a professional and then you have your thresholds to train with. You can use this for months if you don't only use the paces at your thresholds, but you're also incorporating either wattages or your heart rates. You can take this with you for months and this will improve your training dramatically. So how do we move on with this information? Well. Like with all training methods, consistency and adaptation is the key. So, 
while the double Norwegian threshold training holds a lot of promise, I think it may not be for everyone and I think there are much better alternatives. But nonetheless, by understanding the principles and trying to tailor those principles to your specific needs during your training, you can unlock a whole new array of potential. So there you have it, my fellow runners. This was the secret behind the Norwegian double threshold training. I hope you have an understanding now of what this means. Are you going to incorporate this into your own training? Let me know, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click that like button and subscribe to the channel because we'll be bringing out a lot more content in the coming days. I thank you for watching this video and remember, as we lace up our running shoes and walk out the door to start that run, the magic does not lie in some form of training or one specific technique. It's all about consistency, adaptation, and truly enjoying yourself with whatever you're doing. I hope you are absolutely smashing your next workout let me know how is it going and i'll see you guys in the next one bye